grab enough loot, we can make our way to Polar Plateau. Uh, bro, are you lagging? My batteries are toast. You still use this battery. Right. So we have another three minute delay to sit through. That'll be very cool. So in the meantime, why don't we talk about never trusting anyone else to do any aspect of your job? Because if we think about it, right, like it's technically my job to know what team we're playing against. But then when I ask one of the players on Trine's team what team we're playing against, I kind of expect an accurate answer, uh, which is clearly uh, just my bad. No one knows who we're playing against. No one knows even really what's going on right now. Uh, where are we? What is this that we're doing? Why are we all in this room? Uh, questions the world just can't answer. So if we think about it, really, um, honestly, yeah. I'm t I am just so out of it right now, I don't even know. Like. I haven't done this in uh, nearly two months. And okay, so we're going to hear some shouting. So I'm going to turn this down a little bit too. Yeah. So then, 40, 45 more seconds. And then, you guys get to sit through roughly three minutes of dead air as I sit here and try to think about, like, what do I say when I do this stuff, you know? Like, generally, like, what do I what do? I do? Because <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of losing it. I don't know what I do, if we're, if we're being honest here. Oh, yes. Okay. Stream. Streaming. We are doing the thing. We are streaming right now. We are streaming. And... Right. Yes. Do we have... Oh, that's great. I'm getting a Twitch ad. Oh, that's not good. I need to mute this. There we go. Okay. At least I know my audio is working. So, like I was saying before our impromptu break, this is the first match of uh, CLOL, which is another tournament that we are in. And it is the uh, first time in uh, two months that I'm doing this. Well, almost two months. So, if we have any more problems, we can blame it on that. We can blame the problem that already happened also on that. Uh, as we see here, Minnesota State um, are slowly filing in here. Uh, it's the start of the new uh, league season as well, so everybody's ranks are kind of flip-flopped. If we know, um, so normally I like to look at that to get a sense of like where the uh, the weak link is on each team, for lack of a better word. Um, but right now, everybody is everywhere. Who knows? In addition to that, we have uh, very low game numbers per semester or for this season so far. As you can see, Trine has been playing exclusively together, um, which is very cool. And then Minnesota State has kind of a different experience going on here. And Minnesota State needs a few minutes. So we can talk about 
how things normally go, which is to say. Oh. I need a window capture for this again. Just one moment. We're going to have uh, something pulled up here in a minute. Really in a second, but... Window capture, add source, add a new source. Draft tool, window, um, where did that just open? This one. There we go. Okay. So like I was saying, if you don't remember how this works, I wouldn't blame you. Broadly, uh, right now, we are going to have, uh, when, when they're ready, Okay, so we're having some uh, weirdness here. Uh, basically, they said they wanted more time, so we have a little bit of dead air here. So I was going to talk about how the uh, the draft tool works, but then there was a conversation in the uh, the chat on the client here, which is basically that apparently Griffin oh. trying as a team played against. Minnesota State once, at least once before. And uh, yes, Twitch says Trine versus Minnesota State. That is on purpose. The, in the original broadcast, the title was Farmingdale uh, because I was told it was Farmingdale. It was, in fact, not Farmingdale. Um, so that is, that is correct. But thank you for uh, thank you for mentioning. Right. Anyway, back to draft tool. Yes. So, if you don't remember how this works, uh, when they're when both teams are ready, we're going to go into the draft tool, in which Trine has been misspelled by the lovely people at Minnesota State, and uh, they will do the whole draft phase. They will pick characters. They will ban characters. They will strategize. They will take every second of their allotted like five minutes per team, um, because. Nobody has ever planned anything out in advance in the history of the universe. And then, after that, we'll take it over to the client, where they will do the exact same thing, except the, all the characters will be picked in a different order, because they'll be picking for like the people that are actually using them, instead of picking in an order designed to confuse the opponent. And then, when that's done, uh, me and my wonderful audience here will have another uh, three minutes of dead air as we wait for the spectator delay and then only when that's done will we be able to watch the game which also means only when that's done will we be able to find out if something horrible is going to happen and break this stream because uh, this semester has already been uh, not going very well from the uh, broadcast side of things if any of you were here earlier this week we had a broadcast that was intended to be run by Harrison who is uh, somewhat new to running broadcasts, and uh, they didn't end up being able to uh, make any sound at all. Yep. Yeah. yeah, we're good. Okay. okay, well, it looks like we are just about ready to start. So I suppose that, that will have to be the end of that explanation. But long story short, game earlier didn't work. We're still not totally sure why. But, uh... Yep. 
They're ready. Everyone's ready. Okay. Well. Oh, and I'm missing it already. Okay. Well, you take one second to look away. So, as we can see, uh, the teams are doing uh, bands right now. So, first three bands for each team are in mostly, except for... Um, is this not working? Okay, so, oh, it's just lagging, great. First three bands, Wukong, Jax, and Janna coming out from Minnesota State. That is because uh, Wukong and Jax are both very strong right now, and also some of Trine's sort of like pocket picks they li that they like to use. Janna, also just kind of generically strong and a specialty of Trine's support. So it makes sense. Uh, on Trine's side, we have bands for Rise, Fiddlesticks, and Hecarim. Rise is good for the first time in like five years uh, this patch because they accidentally uh, went a little too far on some, some changes they were trying to make. Which means that uh, if you're a competent Rise player, uh, he gets banned out against you now. Uh, which is very funny considering, you know, before this they just kind of let you have the Rise and then win anyway. Uh, Fiddlesticks, I assume, is a Minnesota State specialty in, a, in the jungle because that's not just sort of a generic champion. Hecarim is generic. So it looks like a lot of focus on the jungle so far with uh, across both teams, four band junglers. Uh, and how about this? No, that doesn't work. Why? Why is it doing this? Okay, I'm just going to hope that's updating in real time, even though I can clearly see that it's not. So we have our next set of uh, ones here. Actually, can I just... Oh, yes, that works much better. I wonder why. Okay, again, we're kind of de-rusting after two months of not doing this. So, Minnesota State first pick. Zach, just a very strong pick right now. Try and counters with the Trundle, uh, sort of medium strength, but you know is specifically a counter to Zach, so that would make sense. Then uh, we have both bot lanes. It looks like Caitlyn and Karma versus Zaya and Lulu, uh, followed by the last four bands, which would be uh, Olaf, Shen, Vex, and Syndra. Again, all just like all around strong picks. Uh, no surprises really. Uh, the Zaya actually is a little bit out of out of fashion right now, but you know, it all depends on how good the individual player is at playing that character. And oh, ooh, we get the Udir pick. This is a little bit off uh, off the beaten path here, but it's something Trine's been practicing recently, ever since the uh, the changes to I think Demonic Embrace that lets him do entirely too much damage, magic damage, which might imply that Trine is looking to go an AD mid laner here, uh, and then we get the Kindred from Minnesota State. That doesn't make much sense. I was working under the assumption that the Zac was for the jungle, but if Kindred is not in the jungle, Kindred is hamstringing her team. And we have the Darius, uh, who might be in the top lane. I have no idea what Minnesota State are doing. This is a surprising strategy. I I'm not really sure which champion is supposed to go where. Uh, it could even be Kindred in the bot lane and Zaya somewhere else, but I I don't know. Trine is going to respond by picking Oriana, favorite of uh, many, actually, uh, widely considered to be the best champion ever designed until you know they released better ones, but that's neither here nor there. Okay, so it looks like we have the team comps now. And uh, I, w I would love to see this in the client and we can get a sense of where these champions are actually going and in what order. So, it looks like both teams are ready to take this into the client draft proper. Um, 
And then I, like I said afterwards, I will have roughly three minutes to explain to you why I was surprised at these picks, why they don't make sense to me, and why I am having trouble predicting where uh, each thing is going. But before that, we will get a redo of the draft phase. I know it was a little choppy there when we watched it on the website, so now you can watch it in real time. What's really fun is when, uh, despite the fact that they already know what they're going to pick and have to pick everything uh, exactly the same, they take a full 30 seconds to do their pick. That might not happen here. I hope it doesn't. But it has happened before, and it will happen again. You know, sometimes people just need more time to like talk it out with their team, even after uh, they already know what they're doing. I just love that we're going to have like a 10 second video on the Trine Esports broadcast history that's labeled Trine vs. Farmingdale that consists of like me doing a bad intro and then immediately cutting. That's, that's some good stuff. Yep, like I said, Trine with the Udyr in the top lane and the Trundle in the jungle and then uh, from there there's not really going to be any surprises. I am still very interested. Uh, what the heck Minnesota State's doing? They did pick the Darius for the top lane, which means either Zack or Kindred is going to the mid lane? Which is not something you see very often. Although I guess right now, when uh, Zack is in such a good place, you really can't afford to. Yep, okay, so that is Kindred in the jungle. We're going to see the Zack here a second. The meta right now is in a very volatile place where um, with the uh, with the new season so many things got changed so quickly that people haven't really had time to adapt or figure out what's strongest. So everything's just kind of going everywhere. Which it should make it more fun to watch, in all honesty. Also the uh, the most recent patch was kind of in limbo. I know some of the bigger changes just didn't make it through because instead of doing a proper patch, they just kind of hot-fixed certain changes so in since uh, there was a social engineering attack, I think they called it, at, um, at the company that makes this game. So they didn't really feel comfortable, you know, sending data to people's computers until they have a full grasp of what the damage was. Which is respectable, for sure. Okay, so Olaf, Ban, Shen Ban, and if I remember correctly, next one is Vex and then Syndra. Yep. Okay. As far as matchups go, Darius just kind of classically wins every top lane matchup, although I have never played nor seen played Udyr top into Darius, so, uh,. We could see some sparks here. Uh, Udyr does not have any sort of safety, which does mean that uh, if he doesn't win that lane, he loses it hard. Like uh, He will be completely boxed out of farming. Might even get tower dived a time or two. Especially when Kindred hits level 6. So, and in the bottom lane, Oh, in the jungle, Kindred versus Trundle. Um, you know, they're both just kind of farm until you uh, until you get like two, three items and then just start hitting people sort of champions. Uh, Trundle is usually better at it than Kindred is, so I think Trine has a little bit of an advantage there, but since, they're n since neither of them are kind of aimed at the early game, uh, it does mean we might see some some strange fights contesting like early objectives that come up. First Dragon especially might be uh, a weird one. In the mid lane we have Orianna versus Zac. Orianna doesn't win or lose lane ever. Uh, she sits there, she farms, she gets a billion gold, and then she slowly makes incremental advantages for your team. Uh, Zac, meanwhile, is uh, not normally played in that role, and I don't know what he does uh, for like mid lane or the plan of Oriana to just sort of not engage with the lane. 
It might mean that uh, Zach works as sort of a second jungler and just goes top and bot and top and bot like to get uh, to get extra kills for his team, while Oriana is just kind of sitting in the mid lane trying to get this passive advantage. Uh, Caitlyn and Karma are of course decent. Uh, if if Karma can get her root to go off, especially that that's going to be a big play. On the other hand, uh, Zaya and Lulu are kind of exceedingly safe, and uh, Lulu might actually be better at protecting Zaya than Karma is at protecting Caitlyn, which probably means Minnesota State has an advantage on that side. Although, of course, this all depends on what the Zack is doing at any given time, because if he's just sitting bot lane and jumping on trying over and over, then of course they will win that lane. If he's sitting top, uh, Darius will have a very free time. And if he's alternating between the two, Trine might have a very steep uphill battle ahead of them. And uh, if not, well, I'm going to question what the pick was about in the first place. So this seems like a good time to mention that uh, I have been running these broadcasts for I w almost three and three and a half, three and a half, almost four years now. Um, and if you know anything about universities, you know that that means that I will not be here soon. Can't come soon enough, but soon. So. Uh, my uh, replacements, as it were. One of them is uh, Harrison, who had that horrible technical issue earlier this week. Uh, hopefully he f figures out how these systems work at some point. Uh, other than that, there is Gabe, who I think has been on a broadcast or two with me before. Um, he His style is much closer to mine than Harrison is. Harrison's is, so... If you are fans of the way I do it, uh, you want to tune in for any time Gabe is broadcasting. And if you want more screaming and profanity, you will have to look at Harrison's broadcast. Although, as I'm saying this, I realize we uh, we don't really publish who's running what broadcast in, in any form accessible to our audience. So, I don't know, if you tune in and you hear someone screaming their head off, you should know within like the first 10 seconds. Really. Uh, we are 25 seconds out from getting into the game here, and so I will remind everyone that uh, when this happens, we might get a black screen. Totally normal. If we do, I'll try to fix it within a minute. And uh, if the game just crashes, as it is prone to do, we might have to just turn this off entirely and check back later, but you know how it is. So cross your fingers that we get in here properly. Well, I am into the game. I will simply check you all have joined me. Oh, yes. This is working even better than normal. Fantastic. Okay. So normally I just stick with the directed camera, pop out the scoreboard. There we go. So, as far as summoner spells and rune selections go, um, in the top lane, Udyr has decided not to take Flash. That's very interesting. Flash is just kind of considered the uh, generic strongest summoner spell um, although of course ghost probably is roughly equivalent when you're on a character like Udyr that's really built around running at them as much and as fast as possible uh, in the mid lane Trine has taken teleport whereas Minnesota State has taken ignite that implies to me that Zack is going to be looking for kills early or kills often Probably not against Oriana, if I had to guess. She can play extremely safely. Oh, and as we see here, 
Trundle getting caught out a little bit. Zack with the follow-up, although can't really turn that into anything. Uh, trying now down 50% of Trundle's health bar and uh, his 5-minute cooldown on Flash, so... You know, definitely not nothing, but uh, we like to see like kills here, don't we? In the bottom lane, Caitlyn has decided to take Ghost instead of Heal. Uh, it's a more selfish choice, but it is better at defending against Zack showing up in the bottom lane, which, you know, we have been uh, talking about that as something that might happen on this broadcast. In the top lane, we have Udyr just smacking Darius, going roughly even on trades, which if you know anything about Darius is kind of proof he's winning. And then we're going to have, oh, the early level 2 from Darius, but it's just not early enough. Udyr gets a level 2, like, pretty much immediately after and manages to not die. Definitely, uh, if he was one minion later, Darius might have gotten a kill there. But as it stands, we're just kind of waiting. Trundle, it looks like, is setting up for Scuttlecrab in the bottom lane by warding Kindred's jungle. Is not aware that Kindred is actually right there. Uh, Zach kind of coming to back up the Kindred. Hello. Trundle with the good sense to back off and uh, not get caught out again. In the bot lane, we are having some absolute domination. Trying with double the minion score. Or, well, double when I started the sentence the minion score of Minnesota State, as well as a whole tower plating down. That's that's powerful stuff. And considering Trine's win condition is very often playing around the bottom lane, that uh, might mean good things for later on. Although, of course, it's early enough that uh, anything can happen. It can really be anyone's game. Although, Trine being up... Five, six hundred gold in uh, three minutes with no kills dropped anywhere is usually a, uh, a good sign. It looks like Kindred is going for the Scuttle Crab that has the mark on it uh, with the support of Zack. Trundle, expecting this, is just kind of going for the other one. Um, of course, Kindred getting the mark is uh, bad in the long term, but, you know. There's only so much you can do. I don't think Oriana puts out nearly as much early game pressure as Zack does. So, it, if they tried to 2v2 that, it would kind of just fall apart. I, pre I would predict at least one, maybe two of Trine's players getting killed for nothing in return. Except for delaying a mark, not even stopping fully, because there's, there'll be plenty of time to cash in those marks. We're only four minutes in. We keep checking back in on the top lane. It looks like Darius has recalled and then walked back to lane in order to spend some gold and maybe, like, get an actual kill. Oh, in the bottom lane, Karma getting just a little bit caught out. Stepping up a little too far and dying. In the top lane, we have more trading. Although, of course, not going to turn into anything. Oh, or will it? No. Oh, Darius trying to turn this around with the ghost, but simply not going to be enough. He, he takes the hint and backs off. But this is not good for trying. They're kind of just losing every lane right now if we look at it. Zack half-heartedly committing to a kill there. It's not going to like actually go off. But in the top lane we have Kindred coming in. Oh, helping to clean up the Udyr in the mid lane. Oriana hits level 6 just early enough to be able to try to force a kill onto Zack. He flashes out and survives. But even if she did get it, he has the uh, revive passive. It uh, would, would not give Oriana the gold or the experience that a kill normally would. Well, I take back what I said. Trine are now the ones five, six hundred gold down at six minutes. Just goes to show you, you can kind of expect the unexpected. Trundle in Minnesota State jungle there. Just trying to take camps away from Kindred. Uh, like I said, they're both kind of power farming 
junglers. So having uh, one jungler take the farm of the other one is a good way to make sure that your team wins. Now in the bottom lane, Trine is still on a... Trine is still practically even, which is very funny. There are um, a certain number of last hits up plus the minion plate, which roughly equates to a kill. So that is a very, uh, very interesting. Although, of course, you know, you the kill is, uh, is bad for morale. So, you know, hopefully Trine can sort of keep it under control. They generally do good about not... Um, freaking out, especially if something bad happens in the early game. Oh, and we have Karma just absolutely whiff a Q there. They don't know the Kindred is there. He comes in just a little too late, doesn't turn in anything in the mid lane. We have another fight going on with the assistance of Trine's jungler, although yeah, we're cutting away from that. To focus more on uh, people fighting in the top lane. Which again, will not turn into anything unless a jungler comes. I feel almost 100% certain of this. Because uh, they've been wailing on each other, and now they're both still full health. So... It could take some time. Alright. It looks like Minnesota State is taking the first dragon in the game. Trine doesn't contest. It's unclear whether or not they even know the dragon is being taken. It could be that they just uh, did not realize... Or it could be that they realized that they could not properly contest that. Try and oh, there's a fight happening in the mid lane here. Udir and... Nope. That is one of the people who is not here. It is Darius and Zack versus Tristana and... Nope. Oriana and Trundle. There we go. Why am I having problems right now? Uh, then Udir comes in trying to clean up the Zack. It looks like... He will be able to. Yes, that is Trine's first kill of the game, putting it to 3-1 and evening up the s gold totals. That's interesting. I uh, figured Minnesota State would be a little farther ahead by now, given the amount of things that have gone right for them so far. Although, of course, Darius having two kills should mean that he's able to actually get more kills on his own now. Although, like I said, not really sure how who your top works. Could be that... uh. It's just sort of a sticky defensive pick that uh, that doesn't really die in lane. In the bot lane, we have Karma again, stepping just all the way up. It worked out this time, but uh, it didn't it didn't last time. I'm not sure uh, why we keep doing that. But you know, Trine, of course, always likes to uh, push an advantage when they have one, or even when they don't have one. They just think they do. In the top lane. Nope. Nothing's happening. Nothing's happening anywhere on the map. The camera's freaking out. In the mid lane, actually, Oriana could probably try to force a kill on Zack here when Trundle is ready. Oh, Caitlyn getting caught out. Is it going to... It's not going to turn into a kill. Oh, it might. Oh. If you don't know that, um, that last ability Caitlyn used there can get blocked by allies. And of course, Lulu makes the sensible play and blocks it with her face. That was a very uh, active fight for nothing to end up happening. In the mid lane, Trundle knows that Zack's jump ability is down. Oriana manages to get the ult off, catch him out. Kindred is here. Oh, the flash ult is going to be enough to save the Zack, at least temporarily. And now they're trying to turn it on the Trundle. Oh, but Trundle manages to just get a kill with perfect timing. Zack trying to clean it up, but he overextends. And then Lulu is just caught out in the middle of nowhere. That is three kills for Trine in like less than 30 seconds. That is fantastic. Uh, they are now 2,000 gold ahead. This is a very swinging game so far. Normally, uh, at the 10 minute mark in these games, we have seen maybe one or two kills. So, having seven is a Christmas miracle. One month late. Right now, Trine looking to push a vision advantage by clearing out vision in uh, Minnesota State's junglers. Jungle. 
although they haven't cleared Minnesota State's vision in their own jungle, which is very interesting. Uh, they might just not know that there are those pink wards there. Uh, it looks like Kindred's positioning around top lane, either going to go for a gank when Darius comes back, or possibly go for Rift Herald here in a moment. Trundle is on the bot side, so either way it will work for them. Oh, and in the bot lane, Caitlyn just getting caught out and absolutely beamed by that Zaya there with just tons of damage. Looked like unexpectedly. I'm not really sure what uh, Polyps is thinking. That's like the fourth time that's happened this game. At a certain point, it stops being unexpected damage and starts just being damage. In the top lane, we have Darius and Kindred working together to bring down Udyr. And this is taking entirely too long, considering there's two of them and one of them is Darius. Yes, okay, so that is going to be a kill. In the bot lane, Trundle shows up just in time to help try and get a kill. Zaya playing maybe a little far up, but... You know, not really getting punished. So at that point, it's just a good play. Uh, so that is a one-for-one one across the map. It's the two junglers commit to different things, except in the top lane, there's the Rift Herald still available, which now Minnesota State can get for free. Dragon will not be up for a uh, another little bit here. So that's very... Uh, that's, that's good for... Minnesota State, except now, Zaya gets caught out by the Trundle again, except with the Flash managed to turn it into a reverse kill, making it a 1-4-1. One one. Although, if you're going to have one member of your team die, you kind of want it to be the support, and not the, uh, the AD carry, as the carry implies. Their job is to uh, do damage. So you can see here that uh, Caitlyn just kills Lulu on her own despite starting the fight at half health. So that is exactly why you uh, you don't want your ADC to be the one to die. But uh, that's kind of funny. I don't really know why Lulu thought that she could do that, because with all those minions, even if Lulu gets the kill, she's going to die after to just like bleed over damage. And Trine gets their first dragon in the game, bringing them fully back into this. Now the only material advantage they're down is the Rift Herald. Although with the amount of tower platings they've taken versus the complete lack of tower platings taken by Minnesota State, it seems to imply that uh, the Rift Herald wouldn't even be a real disadvantage for them. Unless, of course, Kindred uses it to just crack down an entire tower instantly. As is uh, usually how the effect is used. In the bottom lane, we're seeing them push up. Yep, this is going to be the Rift Herald play. Uh, Trine are... Oh, they are in position to defend this, especially with the teleport coming up from the Orianna. So they can't really turn that into a tower, and tower platings are already down, so they don't even get any bonus gold from that. They just sort of have to walk away. Udyr is in the top lane alone. Darius isn't there, does not have teleport. Udyr might be able to... Nope. He's deciding not to hit that tower, instead opting to back, probably to spend some gold. Let's see what his items look like. Yes, that is Demonic Embrace immediately, which I understand to be a power spike item for Udyr. It's going to add a lot to his fighting potential in lane, although Darius does have his full Trinity Force, which is also just broadly a very powerful item. Aside from that, Zack is at a major disadvantage here in the mid lane. With two deaths, no kills, versus Oriana's one kill, no deaths. And uh, that translates into a finished mythic item, which is huge. Especially when that item is a dedicated tank-busting item like Leandri's. In the bottom lane, we see the same thing. Caitlyn with a completed mythic, Zaya with not a completed mythic. That is a huge power spike. Although, in the bottom lane, it kind of still ends up being like a skill-based sort of matchup here. If uh, Zaya and Lulu work together and use their abilities properly, they definitely have a chance to take a fight. Although, they might not want to. Taking a fight in that position is definitely very risky. In the top lane, we are seeing more Udyr action. And uh, high-intensity warding. And it looks like in the bottom lane here, 
Shrine might be able to just get this tower if they just keep hitting it. Looks like they're planning on it, and they do! Trundle is on the bot lane too. Zaya ult is down. Both members of Minnesota State's bot lane are half health. They don't, but Trine doesn't know the Kindred's there. Oh, now they do. And the Zac's even there too. The only person who isn't is the Darius, who's currently being absolutely clobbered in the top lane. Uh, absolutely clobbered in this case, of course, meaning he is half health. Uh, somebody ghosted. Oh, it's just the Darius. And in the mid lane, we have another turret taken, followed immediately by an attempted kill on the Zac. He manages to flash out just in time. But now, I mean, if we just look at this, this game as it is right now, and I tell you, one team took Rift Herald. Would you guess it is the team with no turrets taken, or the team with two turrets taken? It's very interesting. Minnesota State, they were doing really good in the early game, and they're kind of uh, kind of falling off here in the past 10-ish minutes. Although, of course, they're still like at, at a minimum like 10 minutes a game left. Oh, the very aggressive flash from the Karma to follow up on the... Uh, the flash from the Kindred, and the flash from the Trumbull coming out is almost going to be a kill, except Kindred has ult, and now Udyr is just sort of caught out on his own, except Zaya steps up too far to try to punish him and ends up getting blown up. That is one kill for Trine in exchange for nothing for Minnesota State. And since Dragon is up and the player that died is the ADC, uh, there Trine might be looking to take Dragon here in a minute. Or I guess they're starting with a second tower. Dragon comes up soon, I believe. I'm not really sure how soon, but... Oh, wait. Is it... There's some hotkey to pull the, the dragon timer up, but uh, I don't know what it is. In the bot lane, we're just seeing like a very sloppy fight on both sides. Caitlyn ends up taking just a bunch of damage, and they're not going to get a kill for it because of the Zac Revive passive. He manages to sneak away with his life. Although, to be honest, by any account, Caitlyn definitely should have died there. Uh, she was under tower, ignited, and actively taking tower shots. Just managed to luck into uh, getting out like half a second early. Kindred, not nearly close enough for trying to try to force an engage. But a hairless crab goes for it anyway on the Oriana play with the flash there. Uh, we've been seeing a lot of flashes. I think we are mostly out of flashes, which could mean, yes, we're seeing actual gameplay now. Uh, Karma gets caught out by the Darius. We have the teleport coming in from the Udyr. Nobody has flash besides Lulu. And uh, Udyr manages to get pushed away. And then the Zac trying to follow up. He manages to land the Q, but will it turn into a proper engage? It doesn't look like it. Trundle's coming back down, having just taken a dragon by himself. And the pillar stopping the retreat. But Minnesota State thinking, wait, we don't have to retreat. We can win. And they definitely cannot. Uh, this is going very poorly for them. That is a, what, one for two? Going to be one for three in a second here if the Lulu gets caught. Um, attempts to speed up the Darius to get away rather than herself. A noble play, but will definitely result in her death here. And then Darius decides to go back in anyway and dies instead in a one for one for Trine's top lane. So that is, overall, that fight was a two for three in Trine's favor, uh, alongside a dragon being taken. Uh, leaving the score right now at 13 to eight for Trine, with a uh, roughly 7,000 gold lead, along with uh, two dragons to Minnesota State's one. And we still don't have any chat messages, which is very cool. How about while we wait for uh, both teams to regroup? Oh, wait, Karma stepping way too far up in an attempt to just try to mess with the Kindred. It's not going to ha do anything. But that was that was very close to either just taking the wolves or having Karma die. Either way, that would, that would be content. As we just watch both teams farm, uh, I would like to take this time to... Uh, Send out a personalized message to all eight of our viewers here. Thank you for being here and supporting Trine Esports. 
We, I know we aren't like a famous program, or even all that good of a program. But when it really comes down to it, all you need is uh, more people than the most other Trine Athletic programs, and then you get all the resources that we have. So, thank you for supporting us. Uh, yeah. I was uh, involved in one of the football broadcasts last semester. They get 500 viewers for, like, a Division Three, not very good team on just a random game. We, of course, even at our, uh, at our highest moments, I don't think have broken 20. Really makes you feel appreciated. Anyway. Oh yeah, Darius got cut out there and died. That one was kind of expected. He was playing way too far up, and uh, Trine's entire team is it was in the top lane. Oriana being caught out uh, should be able to get killed by Kindred, except Zack is going to go back in, risking his own life for what appears to be no reason, as the rest of Trine's team take Baron for free. In the mid lane, we have Karma contesting against two people, which of course she can do, as she is Karma and can one-shot an entire wave. And it looks like Minnesota State are going for their first tower of the game in the bottom lane, which is going to be just a fantastic play for them, because with, the, uh, with the objective bounty, that's like, that's gotta be like a thousand gold split between all of them, which, you know, the gold lead is measured in thousands, so it's important. It's good stuff. Unfortunately, they still have objective bounties because they are not doing good enough for those to go away, which does mean that any further towers they take will also give them bonus gold. Even if they take Dragon now. Oh, Udyr getting caught out uh, using the interaction of Blast Cone and CC Immune to just, like, walk away. That's... I've never seen anyone do that on purpose. It's always on accident, and it always hurts them. So, good job to try and stop laner we look at items here. Oh. Oh my god. Kindred was just like fully farming her own jungle and then just almost got one shot from a bush. That is... Ooh. I, I would, I'm gonna have nightmares about that one, to be honest. Especially with Dragon coming up. If they actually managed to catch her out completely, that would be uh... That might just be game. Although with Dragon coming up, uh, try and having Baron, they will get Dragon. Most likely, uh, Minnesota State shouldn't be able to fight them at this point. Especially not if they do it like this. Just letting Trundle beat the snot out of Zack in the corner there. Um, with, with no help coming to him at all. And Lulu just completely caught out, blown up. Then Zack tries to go in and make it a trade. Except Darius is blown out by the Oriana, who is currently being attacked by the Kindred. And it looks like the Kindred is going to die to just a Karma Q over the wall. The Udyr 1v1-ing the Zaya, And uh, Zaya just barely managing to make it to safety, although that is a 4 for nothing for Trine. They could go for Dragon there, although they still have Baron up. They're just looking to end the game immediately. And that should take us into game 2 of this 3-game series. Well, not 3-game. Best of 3 series. Of course, if that does happen, you you have to imagine that the uh, the atmosphere in the Minnesota State facility right now is um you know kind of falling because this went from being a close game to just a complete stomp for trying as they repeatedly just stand in bushes and catch out people who step a little bit too far up. Not even far enough that it would really be a problem in most cases, but Trine has just been on top of it. They don't manage to end the game. They do manage to take two inhibitors and a Nexus turret. And manage to split pressure to the top lane and Dragon at the same time. Minnesota State trying to respond. Although they, will they get here inside? They do, but can they steal it? No, they definitely cannot. Udi are looking to just kill Darius here. I did not realize that was something that he could do. 
in the mid lane, we have Oriana getting beat up under her own tower, although Zaya overextends for that and dies in exchange. Zack is low health, Kindred is l like 75%, Lulu is low health, Darius is low health and in the top lane. They might just, Trine might just try to force a fight here and then turn it into something, uh, something big. Try to end the game. Darius realizes he has to stay to defend this tower, but he can't stay because Udyr can just keep hitting him. There's not really much he can do in return. Yeah, so it looks like that's... Yep, that will be a kill for Trine. Karma coming in with the exact perfect timing to uh, to stop Udyr from taking a big basketball hoop to the face. Oh well. I'm just... He's not using the basketball skin. Uh, it's just that I do, so that's just sort of how I conceptualize that ability. So uh, if anyone was confused when I said basketball hoop, uh, I'm sorry. Udyr still just unstoppable in the top lane, trying to take this tower on his own. Zach jumping in to try to contest it, and he definitely will be. Or he will be able to stop Udyr from taking it, but now he has to stay there and clear the wave too, or he's not going to. I just heard a ding in the background, which to me indicates that um, this game is over in less than three minutes, as the spectator delay demands, and uh, I am being invited to the next lobby. Now, looking at the, uh, the state of the game right now, does anybody have any predictions about which team might win in less than three minutes? <laughs> Try and... Trying to get a kill on Zaya here, she just has too many safety abilities, manages to get out. Minnesota State holding on for dear life against an 11,000 gold lead with a nearly exposed Nexus, two broken inhibitors. As Trine just sort of wanders the map, taking what they want when they want it. Baron will be up here, and I have to imagine that's the fight that ends the game. Udyr, uh trying to put pressure on the mid lane so they don't notice that the Baron's happening. Will it work? No. Well, yes, actually. It, it seems like Minnesota State are either giving up the Baron on purpose or do not recognize Baron as like a possibility to be happening right now. Which does mean that Trine will get it for free. And with that buff, they're starting to run down the Lulu, who manages to flash out just in time. But, uh, you know... Trine has one flash. Minnesota State has one flash left as well. Next person to get caught out probably does die. Oh, yep, and it will be the Darius here. Or it will not be the Darius. Trine will just be overzealous. Zach uh, trying to get in the back line and sort of disrupt Trine's whole game plan, but ends up having to flash out, almost dying. Darius try just really trying for the Caitlyn there. Does not does not get anything for it. The Kindred ult ends up leading to Caitlyn's death, making that a 1 for 5. And the end of the game here. So as we go into game 2, uh, we'll have to see how each team's strategy changes. I don't think the Zac was a very good pick. He ended up 0 and 5. For something that's kind of a, a pocket pick or like a cheese strategy, you, um, you would expect it to do better. All right. Well, let me, uh, there we go. And a uh, friendly reminder that I do check chat every once in a while. Um, it's fine if you just don't want to say anything. But if you do, you have a high chance of being responded to, considering there's almost no messages. And then beyond that, uh, if there's any technical issues, audio cuts out, black screen, just put it in the chat there, and I will see it and fix it, because that is something I can do now. If you remember, um, I believe it was around last semester or a year ago, uh, we had a string of games where there was just a black screen, and I didn't notice for upwards of 15 minutes. Well, we have the technology now to look at chat and stream at the same time. 
So we are fancy. Alright, well, while we wait, uh, I suppose now would be a good time. Well, we're going to have plenty of good times to have water breaks, walk the dog, go to the bathroom, make a sandwich, any number of things you might want to do. Because uh, we, have, we have to wait for them to get to the draft, which could take any amount of time. And then after all the drafts are done, we have another three minutes of just waiting. So if you want refreshments, uh, you can go now, you can go later. Totally up to you. If you don't want refreshments, then you can sit here and listen to me ramble about nothing as I try to make content without sitting on the client waiting for the team to come in. Uh, speaking of waiting for the team, I did say earlier that everyone's ranks are kind of messed up because it's so early in the season, uh, so we can't really use that as an indicator of who's going to do well. But if we look at this, uh, Minnesota State's top laner and mid laner are both in silver. Their bottom laner is in bronze. So uh, that those may be accurate judging by the uh, the way the game went last time, although the bottom laner did do pretty well. Although, wait, that's a level 34 account? Okay, so this is what is known as a, uh, a smurf account, which was sort of popularized as a term in the StarCraft 2 days, uh, because the best, p one of the best players uh, could no longer get in matches. Because, you know, he's one of the best players who would sign up to match with you. So he created two alternate accounts, Papa Smurf and Mama Smurf. And then he uh, proceeded to just stomp all over people. And then, like, the greater gaming community at large ended up, you know, calling it Smurf accounts. And you make an account that is not accurate to your actual level or skill, and then use it to just beat up on uh, people who are worse than you. It is also possible that Minnesota State just has a Bronze 1 player with a level 34 account. I don't know why they would have that. Uh, as a university, you have access to just like the sheer number of people that that shouldn't be something you have to resort to. But on the other hand, it's possible. We had a player at one point who was um, Bronze, very low account level, although of course he did not play Varsity and also quit the team very quickly, but more power to him. Oh my gosh. Is is easy peasy easy PFZA their top laner? I don't I gotta be honest, I wasn't looking at names in the last game. But if that was the Zac or the Darius, then that's probably just accurate account information. Because that was a uh, poor showing, for sure. Oh my gosh, he was the Darius. Yep, okay. That might just be real. Because that was, uh, I didn't want to mention it case it was just being rude but uh that that Darius gameplay was poor like there is no reason that he took Q level one who does that oh right right the draft yes playing the game so if I click on the spectator link because I'm very special and then I just pop open that yeah, let's go. Okay. It's pronounced thankses. Yeah. 
Shrine is no longer misspelled. That's pretty good. Well, for now, we're just going to have to uh, wait for both teams to get ready. I'm going to assume Chis Chestnut Soup is their uh, broadcaster's account or their coach. Those are really the only two people that end up in the spectator section. They are ready for the draft, which might mean that we get organic content here in a second. Or, even better, might mean that we have to wait for Trine. I'm going to foul them for delay of game. <laughs> I don't even have the power to do that. But I can hear them behind me, just like singing at each other. And I'm not quite sure. Yes! Oh, it looks like we're getting ready to go. That's fantastic. Wukong got banned again, and you could hear the audible no from across the room. Which I'm not going to say it's unexpected, considering it's the same thing they did last game. Uh, Trying going with the Hecarim ban, Minnesota going with the Jax ban. These are exactly the same. You would expect Minnesota to go with a different sort of tactic here, considering um, the ultimate result of the last game, but I guess not. They Minnesota State banned the Zack, which was their pick. So I assume they just don't want trying to have it, which is why they picked it away and then tried to figure out where it fit into the team comp afterwards. Um, because, you know, there's that whole, like, oh, it's a flex pick, you can play it in any role sort of idea floating around, even though it's not real. Um, and that's why we ended up with a absolutely poor showing in the middle lane by the, uh, by the Zack. Okay, so they pick out the Caitlyn. So they don't want trying to have it. Trying just went with the same bands, which is very funny. And then we will see Trine's first pick here. I am a You are a really good caster, thank you. Oh my god. I think this is the first time I've gotten a message in chat that wasn't in direct response to something I said or telling me about a technical issue. It really just warms my heart, you know? People do care. <laughs> so we <laughs> uh, we got the Ash pick here from Trine. I don't really understand it. Um, Ash is a bad character, like full stop. Not gonna sugarcoat it. Ash never seems to do anything besides just like try to ult things, which is decent but not reliable, and definitely not as good as just picking a character that has four buttons instead of one. Um, we get the Sejuani pick. Trine has been practicing that in the top lane. It could be that, or it could be jungle. Um, just all around a good character. Followed by another pick, which will be in four seconds or less. A Morgana. Yes, okay, that is a good synergy with Caitlyn. That is just sort of like beginner's guide to team comps type stuff. Um, together, they do a lot of damage, which... Oh, and we add the Amumu. So they're trying to do, like, sort of a lockdown thing in response to trying, trying to do a lockdown thing. Uh, with, but Morgana with the Black Shield usually means that the team she's on when both teams are trying to do this end up uh, winning. So that that is a good strategy to follow. Next up, we have the Trundle pick. It is exactly the same as last game, except... Counterpicking a Mumu instead, which I'm not not really sure how that pick works. Uh, a Mumu can gank early, Trundle cannot. Therefore, a Mumu will take the first like two dragons, probably. I'm not quite sure. Far as bans go, we see the Shen ban, same as last game. Olaf ban, same as last game.
And in 15 seconds or less, we will see Trine's last ban of this draft, which will be shown to us as Silas. Yes, there we go. Silas is just sort of generically strong in the mid lane, but also very good picked into Sejuani. And then they ban the Udir because they are afraid of it from last game. Totally fair. Uh, very much expected. Trine is going to pick. Uh, it looks like they have possibly support in top lane left to pick. That is, uh, that is Lux. So if we're getting some bleed in, there is another event going on in this room, which might be bleeding over into the microphone. The Lux is a decent pick into the Morgana, but it's really more of a skill matchup. Uh, try and probably assuming that they can win a skill matchup after everything that happened last game. Minnesota State picking out the Oriana so that Trine can't. Totally fair, although the Syndra is not banned this game, and that is a specialty of Trine's mid laner. So that is wide open, actually. I think uh, I think the only counters to it are like Zed and Talon, and if they've already picked mid laner or a mid lane like passive scaling mage, Syndra is going to run away with the game. And then Mordekaiser, Minnesota State's last pick, as their top lane. It's decent into uh, into Sejuani, I think we're assuming the top lane is. So, you know. Again, just probably going to be a really passive one. If anything, Sejuani might get a kill early because um, just putting out a disgusting amount of burst. Like percent max health damage. I'm hearing some strategizing from Trine's team about uh, moving things in unexpected places. So that is interesting stuff. Hopefully it works out for them. Uh, if we swap back to the client here, <laughs> we do care. Yeah, you care. <laughs> I, I'm, my legions of adoring fans here are really are really quite wonderful. Well, we're going to see them redo exactly what they just did, and uh, then. We will have three minutes of downtime, which is, uh, that's probably when I, I will take a quick break, go get some water, because my throat is killing me now. And then afterwards, we should have another very exciting game. Game two, Minnesota State versus Trine University. I just want to say that there is totally a chance that this is not Minnesota State. Uh, I like how I was told it was Farmingdale earlier. Uh, I was just told it was Minnesota State by the same person. So we're just going to cross our fingers and hope I haven't been misidentifying them this entire time. Especially since... I'm not quite sure how to change a uh, stream title in a stream that's currently running. Right, so we're seeing the Trundle in the top lane, so 20 in the jungle, which is a swap from what I expected, and I think a swap from what Minnesota ex expected. Um. 
one. Minnesota, on the other hand, coloring entirely within the lines, painting by the numbers, and even more so metaphors for doing exactly what we expect them to do. I'm not really sure what the delay is right now. We've taken 15 seconds to pick a band. I mean, all of the bands are set in stone. Come on, I won't hurt you. I promise. But then... Now... And then now we have the Udyr ban. And then we will, uh, I'm sure just blitz through these last four picks. Uh, that's the Ash pick. Caitlyn. Morgana. 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 <laughs> Come on. There we go. And Lux. Immediately. We're picking Lux immediately? Please. There we go. And they're stalling to have more time to think about strategies. Which is fair. You're allowed. It's a it's a valid use of your time. Just does mean that I, I have another 15 seconds sitting here not doing much. So then, like I said, at the end of game one, now is the time if you want to go get a drink, walk your dog, make a snack, uh, tell your neighbor about this incredible Twitch stream you're watching anything like that because we will have uh, in 30 seconds we will start a three minute timer and then and only then will we be able to watch the game and again I feel like I need to mention if there is anything about the stream that is not working just pop a message in chat I will properly be able to respond to it now we have the technology to look at Twitch chat and stream at the same time. Of course, if the screen goes black and uh, you don't care and you prefer it that way, then don't feel like you have to say anything. You are, you are definitely allowed to have your opinion. Someone else probably make their opinion known and ask for me to uh, fix it, which will be fun. We're just still kind of sitting here waiting for anything to happen. But I am keeping my ears open. Since I'm in the same room as the, uh, the team, I can tell you that something is happening immediately at the start of the game. So put your butt back in the chair and uh, keep your eyes open because we have no idea what's coming. And Trine's team is, of course, making a lot of noise. Laughing. And uh, probably winning the game in uh, 20 minutes or less. Or at least turning this series into two games instead of three. Uh, as it is a best of three. If they win this one, Minnesota State will not even have a chance to come back.
If not, we would go to game three. Of course, somewhat obviously, but you know, we don't have a. Uh, we don't have to worry about that this time. I should get out of here at a reasonable hour. Which, of course, it doesn't matter to uh, to you all, but I have a limited amount of time to go to the uh, university dining hall. If I miss that, then I have to spend my own money, which is really not uh, the move, I think. Well, spectator delay is over, and we should be getting in the game right now. Everyone get excited! Okay, so, first check. Please. Okay, well this is how we're doing this. Now you guys will be able to see each and every time I pull up chat, so you'll know that I'm not just ignoring your messages. But in fact, I just haven't gotten to see them. Welcome to Summoner's so Trine knows that last game, Minnesota State started out by all stacking up in one bush and trying to catch someone out immediately. So now they are trying to do the same thing. Oh, and yup, this is going to turn into a 5 on 5. Okay, yup. That is immediately a free kill for Trine. A second free kill for Trine. A third kill for Trine. A fourth even here. And then Mordekaiser just has to walk away with his tail between his legs. That is disgusting. 1.8 thousand gold up. Two kills went to the ADC, which is not where you want to see it if you're a Minnesota State fan. This this game might just be over immediately. Um, it looks like Ash didn't spend all of the gold she got. Only spent 350 of it, which is you know good for uh, for for comeback purposes. Um, although of course three members of the other team being like a starter item up on you at minute one of the game is not where you want to be. And then of course Lux landing a Q on the Caitlyn, making her miss the first uh, the first couple CS of the game. Or at least one CS. Oh, and she's caught out. She has to cleanse to get away. In the top lane, we just have Mordekaiser dying. Well, at least now all of Minnesota State scores match. Uh, Mordekaiser has no farm, and we'll have to teleport back to lane immediately. So this is definitely the wrong foot to start the game off on. The Mordekaiser was definitely picked thinking it would be playing into Sejuani, uh, which, you know, good on trying for, for abusing that assumption. Although, unfortunately... This is going to be a uh, long, hard road for Minnesota State to get back into this. Especially if that happens. That's going to be likely going to be another kill. Or no. Yes, that, that will be another kill. <laughs> Three on one in the mid lane, followed immediately by cutting the top lane where Mordekaiser is getting mollywopped again. As we wait, I will check on chat. Okay, we are good. In the top lane, uh, a Mumu shows up, and Trundle decides, oh, if I'm not going to get out, I may as well try to go for a kill. Manages to turn it into a one for one out of nowhere. That is not a good sign. Uh, a Mumu now has the first kill of the game for. Minnesota State, but this is one seven. What was it? Was two seven Brazil v Germany? That was a while ago. In the mid lane, 
Uh, Oriana not even caught out, just try and will not leave her alone. She cannot escape from three people yet again. Uh, Ash, of course, able to just hold bottom lane on her own now that she's two kills up immediately. Lux is level two from all the roaming, but it doesn't matter because just furthering Trine's advantage constantly. Okay, now we're sort of back to just normal farming hours. Although I will say that uh, with all the solo experience that Ash has been getting, should have ult there soon. And Ash ult can very quickly turn into a kill if uh, the other team is not expecting it. We're watching Ash just miss, miss some CS here. Uh, everyone point and laugh. Can't it see us under tower. Uh, Morgana looks like going the long way around to get a deep ward in and pop that plant there. I don't know, doesn't even deep ward. Just for the plant. Uh, Morgana, oh, playing way too aggressive. Does not block the uh, the luck, the light binding there from the Lux. And now Caitlyn trying to capitalize on it. But stepping up a little bit too far. This is dangerous. Ash just going to get another kill. Lux barely missing a Q. That would have been another kill. But right now, uh, Dragon's up, Morgana is not. If uh, Sejuani wants to come down to the bottom lane, they might, Trine might just be able to take the first one of the game here in five minutes, which is very early. Uh, in the mid lane, Oriana is getting followed, chased again. This time manages to just barely make it out, but only just because Lux wasn't there also. Um, and if we look at this item disparity, Caitlyn has a starter item and a potion. Meanwhile, Ash has like roughly 1900 gold worth of items. Uh, Minnesota State trying to do the same thing to Cinder that Trine keeps doing to Oriana, but it just barely doesn't work out. Actually, Oriana almost dies there in trade for the uh, the nothing that it ended up being. Except Lux is trying to sneak her way up to actually get the kill. Turning that almost into a did. Although it looks like, yes, it definitely looks like Minnesota has that warded. In the top lane, we are seeing fighting between Mordekaiser and Trundle. Trundle, of course, losing horribly because how would he win that? I'm not really sure what the plan was. There was no world where that works. This is why I'm saying he might actually just be a bronze player. If he's not, and he's smurfing, uh, and that is therefore insulting to him, I don't care. I do not respect people who have smurf accounts. And it looks like Trine are just trying to take Dragon here. Minnesota are not in a position to respond. They might not even know what's happening. Yep. Caitlyn just started walking up right at the end there and uh, did not get there even close to fast enough. Ash has ult available, but they Trine doesn't know Amumu is currently in the bottom lane. If, if Trine decides to go in on this, this could be Minnesota's path back into the game. They do decide to go in. Yeah, okay. Well, we traded cleanses at least, except Amumu doesn't have ult. So they can't really turn this into anything real. Uh, Oriana is coming down, but Oriana is now caught out by the same three people who have been catching her out all game. Uh, that's t really too bad. Amumu trying to save her goes too far in and dies. Caitlyn trying to get revenge goes too far in and dies. Morgana going too far in and dying. It's the same story over and over, but Caitlyn at least manages to get a single kill. Uh, it's now 2-14. to 14. And in 8 minutes with a dragon going to Trine, and all these tower platings going to Trine as well. You know, this game has been uh, very entertaining so far, but uh, I think we all kind of know where this is going. Uh, this, this is a good way to start the uh, Seelol season off for 
Trine. And a very bad omen for Minnesota State. In the top lane, uh, Trundle just deciding to go in. Amumu is there. Amumu has ult. Will Amumu be able to turn it around? Yes! Managed to stop Mordekaiser from dying. But uh, unfortunately, Trundle does have the flash to get out of there. And then just because of the amount of passive healing that Trundle as a character has, plus the fact that he has a Blade of the Ruined King finished, uh, he should be full health here in a moment when the wave comes to him. And uh, I would definitely expect him to try to fight Mordekaiser again. Mordekaiser then leaving to go take Rift Herald with a Mumu. Although Trine Jungler is also on the top side. It looks like they know something's up. Yes, they definitely do. They're trying to scare off the Sejuani here, but they can't finish this Rift Herald. Which means that Trine should just get it here. At the very least. And it seems like they're going to end up getting a kill too. Well, I guess not. Trundle just sort of chasing a Mumu through the jungle. Doesn't manage to end up getting it. We see the first Lux ult of the game. It looks like it hit, but it wasn't for a kill. It was more just to like do damage. And Trine's top laner now taking Minnesota State's jungle um, at 10 minutes because they just don't respect them. I guess. This is a very... They're fighting dirty. They already have an advantage and they are pushing it as far as they can, as fast as they can. And now Trundle is actually behind Mordekaiser again if he goes up to take that wave. It looks like he sees that and backs off, but if he stayed up just a little while longer, he might have died, even. Which is just crazy for this game to be going this fast. <laughs> the Lux ult just to stop the Caitlyn from recalling, that's hilarious. And the Ash ult from downrange just barely missing. That would have been a kill for trying if it hit. Unfortunately, it did not. <laughs> Morgana trying to fix some sort of the, or at least a little bit of the vision gap that's developed in the jungle here. But uh, it might be a lost cause, especially as uh, Morgana's lane is being pushed. She needs to get back down there and stop them from taking more tower plates. In the top lane, we're seeing Trundle just terrorizing Amumu again. Although Mordekaiser is ready it looks like they're going to be able to turn this around. Yes, that is another kill for Minnesota State. That is, you know, a start. Although, of course, there is a 7,000 gold lead at 11 minutes into the game. Uh, and Dragon will be up soon. Trying already in position. Uh, oh my god. Oriana kind of getting caught out here, although Amumu's there to save her. And uh, get a return kill, yes! Minnesota State might be properly back into this soon. Not quite yet, but soon. Trundle engaging on the bottom lane uh, under their own tower. And it looks like this is going to be two kills for Trine. Although the Amumu flash queuing in. Might be able, no, will not be able to kill the Ash here. Uh, completely denied a play by the uh, mere existence of Sejuani. Dragon is up. Three of Minnesota's players are down. They're going to lose a tower immediately. And it looks like this is going to continue to keep snowballing out of control here. And also in the top lane, Trundle doing what he does best and just beating up anything that doesn't move. I'm Minnesota State here. I've got to be focusing on this top lane. Trundle is playing so far up almost all the time. It's the source of more of your kills than any other individual player on Trine's team. Like, you, you've got to be thinking that's your uh, that's your ticket back in if you can keep abusing the fact that Trundle doesn't really have a tool to escape. Although at a certain point, Trundle might reach the point where he can simply just 1v2, because he's already kind of close to that. Right now, we're having, yep, we're having a fight between... Trundle and Mordekaiser that is going to end in Mordekaiser's death. 
Uh, and ooh, just a random ash ult it looks like. Going from mid lane down to the bottom and hitting Morgana, leading to just another free kill for Trine. When it comes to resource management in this game, you really want people to um, to give up something for everything they get. Here in the mid lane, trying, trying to make them give up Orianna's life, and they, they actually do succeed in doing that. In exchange for uh, having uh, Ash die. And then, of course, Caitlyn <laughs> walking just an inch too far up and being sent to another dimension with the assistance of Syndra ult. Trine has now taken three towers, two dragons, one Rift Herald, and uh, is 16 kills up as compared to Minnesota State's absolutely no objectives. And uh, it looks like Trine is actually going to get another tower here in a minute if Minnesota State isn't careful. Or actually, even if they are, I don't think they can stop it at this point. Yep. So, Trundle, now that he's taken two towers, probably is too much to fight. Uh, nobody else is consistently out of position. So this might be... Uh, this might really be the end here. <laughs> Trundle comes back to lane and immediately decides that attempting to fight Mordekaiser again is the right strategy. Except the Mumu is there, ready to ready to try to fix it. Will it work? Yes! It looks like it will. Like I said, the focus on the top lane here is definitely going to pay off. Rift Herald coming back up in uh, less than a minute, I believe is what the gray hourglass symbol means. Oh, the Ash ult just barely misses. Amumu going in, followed up by the uh, by the Mordekaiser who manages to get a kill. And then the 1v1 between the Ash and the Mordekaiser. Yeah, that is, you know, if Minnesota State can get all of their gold to go to Mordekaiser, that might be their way back into this. Trine definitely not playing this as seriously as they should be. Um, you can tell they kind of thought the game was just over. So they're all uh, they're all just sort of letting things happen that they definitely shouldn't be. And if they do that enough, then uh, Minnesota State might be able to turn it around. That being said, Trine are taking their second Rift Herald of the game which they can definitely convert into at least one tower immediately. Uh, and if they save it looking for a better time, they might be able to convert it into an inhibitor or two or three towers even. Like if we uh, see what's happening in the top lane right now, Trundle playing very far up, might decide to go try to kill Mordekaiser again. Amumu is not in position to defend him this time. Oh, Amumu trying to contest Raptors and getting caught out. It's not enough for a kill, though. Although Sejuani just putting out chunks of damage here. And also getting caught out by the Morgana Q there. That is Morgana stepping a little bit too far up, but no one's keeping an eye on Oriana's ball. That's going to be a free ult on all of Trine's team, except it's not going to turn into anything. The Syndra gets fed up, says she'll do it herself, and ends up just flashing over and destroying a, uh, a Morgana there. Trundle, like I said playing way too far up because he knows only Mordekaiser is there and Mordekaiser can't fight him. Amumu w tried to flash in an ult there, but ended up dying instead. The perfectly timed Mordekaiser Q stops the uh, the Rift Herald charge there, which would have been a lot more free tower damage, although they are also going to get the mid lane tower, so like I said, they took the uh, they took two towers off of the same play. Which is to say, having four people in one place and Trundle in another. Dragon is back up! Uh, it doesn't seem to me that Minnesota State is really in a position to contest it if Trine just decides to go for it, although it looks like they're playing safer and deciding to recall first. Or 
even just attempting to catch out the uh, the Amumu or someone here. Yeah, that. Yup, that will be uh, Oriana's entire health bar almost. Followed up by a Luxol. Just an attempt. There's no reason not to try it. Uh, you very rarely hit that one, but when you do, that that's a montage moment right there. That is three dragons for trying. Minnesota State has still taken no objectives and is still 18 kills down. The gold lead has progressed to 12,000 for trying. Well. Now it looks like both teams are just kind of playing around each other, trying to regroup, farm up, uh, get ready for the next fight, which will likely end the game, especially if it's around this Baron. Because at this point, if Trine gets Baron, then it really is just all over but the crying. And honestly, even if they don't, uh, I'm not quite sure there is a comeback from this possible. Mordekaiser has to keep being the only one to contest Trundle just because nobody else wants to do it, even though he can't really do it himself. And Trundle in the bottom lane, ready to capitalize on this Baron immediately by pushing into the only tower that's still up outside of the base. As, uh, yeah, it looks like Minnesota State are going to send everyone to go try to deal with them. Or, no, they're going to split up, actually. Two mid, two bot, one top. Except they all have to retreat and go top as soon as, like, one of those Nexus Towers starts getting hit, which it will be in a second. But their inhibitor tower is going down right now, and there's no one who can really defend it because only Morgana's here, and she can't really do anything. The Amumu tried to ult there. Oh. Oh my gosh, just one after another, people just being caught out and blown up. Uh, the Mordekaiser, again, Minnesota State's one strong player, kind of trying to keep him in this. It's not going to work. Doesn't look like it's going to work. Uh, but, oh, we just saw a bunch of flashes traded for no reason, but Trundle is still up and hitting the bottom lane. Lux and a bunch of minions that are Baron buffed are hitting the middle lane. And uh, when Trundle hits those center towers, it's going to be game real quick. If they can't either kill him or force him to leave. But uh, Mordekaiser and Morgana, I don't think can do it. Oh, Caitlyn respawns just in time. The game will continue for a little while, but with all three lanes down and this amount of free tower damage just from Baron buff, I, I don't think this... Uh yep. Okay, and then Caitlyn steps up a little bit too far. Syndra teleports back in with a full health bar and a full mana pool and her ult back up. Almost. While Trundle just goes on a tear here. And the Ash ult just whiffs. Because Ash is, again, not, not a real character. Only has one button. You can see Sejuani pinging the Ash ult there. Uh, we can close that. Yup, okay. Mordekaiser catches a Sejuani ult, nearly dies, manages to just barely survive. The Amumu ult is not long enough to hit the Lux, which I think was the only real target there. And now, Trine and ending the game, going 2-0 against Minnesota State University in this first week of Seelol. Well, that was a, uh, a solid showing from Trine. And uh, not the best Minnesota State has ever played, to be sure. Um, but I believe that that's it. I, I think I think that's the end of our um, broadcast here. So again, I'd just like to remind everyone the big points of the stream today. Uh, we can look at chat now which is a, a, it's actually huge on the back end. It's kind of funny that it's just like, you know, that's just 
expected to be the bare minimum, and then we finally get it, and it's this big thing, but yeah, we can look at chat now. And also, uh, this is my last semester doing these broadcasts, so if you are a fan of mine, be sure to catch every single one till the end of the year. They should all be in this uh, C-Law tournament. So, yeah. Well, have a wonderful, uh, wonderful week coming up. I might be here next Saturday, or I might not be. We don't know. But uh, whatever you're doing, do it well. <laughs>